Unreal. Just turning up mud. Welcome back to the next leg of our trip on the Intracoastal Waterway. On this trip, you get to see us run aground, and I also dive in the props once we get to Beaufort, South Carolina. So stick around. Had a nice restful sleep. Anchor held well. You could see my track over the night through the uh, tide changes. It's time to get going. Clean, nothing coming off the chain at least. Let's see what the anchor looks like. Not too bad. A little bit of mud. Not bad at all. Okay, so we have departed from our anchorage at Church Creek, South Carolina. Uh, that's, I guess, midway between Charleston, South Carolina, and Beaufort, South Carolina, which is where we are heading right now. We have some favorable tides. We're uh, moving at a good clip right now, almost 10 miles an hour, um, so uh, at 1,600 RPM. So saving fuel again, which is good. What we're hoping to do after Beaufort is to head out on the ocean tomorrow if the conditions are favorable. All right, just to show you one of the many things you gotta watch out for out here. So you have the buoys and the day marks, the aids to navigation out there. You have the red on the right, green to port, red to starboard. Here's got my one Navionics app on my tablet. I'm right on course here. And here is the GPS on my boat, which is only a year old. Look at these maps, how different they are. According to this chart, I should be way over there. I was following this chart, but it I was in five feet of water. So I looked at this one here, and this chart showed me that I should be more to the right, which is more in line with what the buoys, uh, the day marks say. But looking at this chart, I'm gonna be going right over the tip of that land there. But um, apparently they did some moving of the channels did some dredging here to get rid of that because you can see how far over I am from uh, from the charted channel which is way over there but in actuality we are smack in the middle uh, bottom line is uh, follow your aids to navigation your buoys as they get moved as needed another thing I want to mention about using a tablet that has Navionics apps on it. It's very important that you use a tablet that has cell phone capability, meaning you could connect uh, wirelessly uh, via the cell sites. Um, a lot of tablets are just Wi-Fi, and if you just have a Wi-Fi tablet that does not have the, uh, the SIM card um, inside of it uh, to connect to cell towers, you will not get an accurate reading on your GPS, at least in the older tablets that I, I I have here. I have an old iPad that does not work well um, with, with just the GPS feature that's built in. It's not accurate enough to use for navigation. Um, however, these newer tablets, the one with the cell phone, the SIM card, um, that works. You don't need to pay for the cell service, but it still connects to the cell towers to give you a more accurate location. Tide. Don't get too close to the markers. Alligator. Another alligator. Those pink birds again. Have to really pay attention on this stretch. At least at low tide. The tide is still going to go down like another foot. That's going down to about four feet on my depth finder, which is about five and a half. So we're going to be talking about four and a half feet of water when I draw three and a half. That doesn't give a whole lot of wiggle room at all. So a little white knuckle driving right here. 
Oh, I'll be happy when we're out of here. Four and a half feet. A little ways to go. Depth finder got down to uh, three feet, which is about four and a half feet or so for me. And uh, way below my comfort zone. But we're back in open water now, so we should be good for a little while at least. All right, we're coming up to Fenwick Cut, which is a small channel, canal. Let's just cut through these islands right here. Really small, just to get from one side to the other, up to Fenwick Island. So we're going around that way. Looks really shallow here too. You can see how all the currents are mixing together over here. Almost makes it look shallow. It's a little shallower. Right up to seven feet, six feet. Oh boy. Get shallow quick right there. More shallow beep alarms going off. It was just like less than five feet. And it opens up again once we're out of this cut. Only a few hundred feet long. But it gets shallow really quick. Got me a bit nervous. Didn't want it to get any worse. Zigzagging through a lot of rivers and tributaries and streams along the intracoastal here, over to uh, Beaufort, South Carolina. But this is typical of what you're going to see between the southern part of South Carolina and uh, through Georgia. All right, we're coming up to another notoriously shallow part of the ICW. It's another cut from river to river. Again, being at low tide for this is, uh, really makes it a lot worse. I'm hearing we're supposed to have at least five feet at average mean low water, they call it. It's your average low tide. Um, we are at low tide right now. Don't know how average it is. It could be less than five feet. But uh, we need at least three and a half to not hit bottom. All right, another one of these shallow channels. You get an idea how shallow it is here. Look at the crab pots. They're actually exposed all along this creek here. Water is so low that the crab pots are out of the water. This must be the dredging barge. Maybe they'll get ready to dredge this out. Machinery up there. More crab pots high and dry. Almost out close we are here. This is ridiculous. This shallow. Look at me. I'm right between the two buoys here. Two feet. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, in the middle of the ICW channel. And it's probably three and a half feet, but still unacceptable. What do we pay taxes for? Unreal. Just turning up mud. All right, it looks like we're making it through it. Just going super slow. I mean, that, that was probably less than three feet of water. I, I lost the reading on the depth finder at one point and uh, it showed like one and a half, which is my props in the mud. But um, you don't feel anything. It's just going really slow and it's just churning up the muddy bottom. But still, it's shallow and I'm still way out here. Joys of boating. We are approaching Beaufort, South Carolina. A major milestone here for this trip. So, uh, hello, Beaufort. 
and we're gonna pass right through and head on to Hilton Head. We're making good time, relatively good time today, and I gotta make up some lost time. You know, I wanna beat the weather, try to get on the outside for tomorrow. Okay, this is the Ladies Island Swing Bridge. Connects uh, Beaufort to, I guess, Ladies Island. That's probably a good guess, right? Bridge, the first dock on the right, that's the uh, town free dock. You can pull up to there and walk around the town for the day. They don't charge you for that. You can't stay overnight. Well, they charge, I hear, 50 cents a foot to dock along the wall. And then you have the uh, marina. Also right past the marina here is a mooring field. They charge $30 a night to snag a mooring ball. So when I see something like that, I say, what am I doing? I should drop anchor and enjoy it, right? All right, screw it. This is too good of a spot to pass up. Plus, I have to dive on the anchor. It's a nice sandy point. The water is clean. And it seems like we're protected from those damn winds that we've had. So I'm gonna drop anchor right here. All right, we have dropped anchor. Off the sandbar over here where a lot of people are enjoying themselves. And the water is nice. I'm sure it's warm. So I'm going to be able to dive on the prop today. The water is nice and clear. The current's running. But I'm going to jump in that water and see what's up with this prop so that I am confident of what I'm going into when we get out on the ocean. All right, we got our dinghy out. And we're ready to go in. Water's relatively warm so uh we're ready to dive in hopefully i don't lose the camera don't want to lose the camera so uh all right wish me luck here we go salty water uh, there's a uh, pretty swift current here so i gotta uh I have some lines here to hold on to so I don't float away. Let's see. looks perfectly fine nothing to wrap around the shaft propellers in good shape so uh, it spins okay looks good to me I'm gonna go check the other one I know it's hard to see but to get an idea on how fast the current is moving you can see the particles in the water flying by the camera really was struggling trying to hold on, film, and also check the props at the same time. So, sorry for the poor footage. Enough of that shenanigans. Nothing's wrong with the props. Nothing's around the prop. I don't know. Either something was on it and it fell off. The rope or something. And it untangled itself or eventually broke. <clears throat> so uh, I'll give it a shot getting it up back on plane when I get the opportunity tomorrow. And who knows? Maybe it's fine. After getting out of the water and drying up, I decided to hop in the dinghy, take a little ride, check out the sandbar party, and head over to the town of Buford Public Docks. Sometimes you gotta kick back and relax a little bit.
this is what Florida is going to be like, you're going to love it. So there's the view for day dock. Here is the uh, seawall. You can dock here. Looks like they're having some sort of farmer's market set up behind it. It's probably for later because uh, nobody's here now. But it is Friday. Hey, that's my beer. Miller time. Now that I look closer at all these tents, they're all beers. It's Corona Premier. Maybe it's a beer fest. Beer festival. Nice. Oh, well, there's the market over there. Vendors selling their wares under the tents. Yeah, there's another Meridian for you Meridian fans out there. That's a Meridian 411. It's been a few days since I had my feet on terra firma. So maybe I'll uh, take the opportunity to walk around a little bit. Alrighty. Alright, so this is apparently the annual Beaufort, oh, excuse me, Beaufort Water Festival. And lots of beer. Looks like they sell lots of alcohol here. Must be a party waiting to happen. As usual, I'm early to the party. Check this out. There must be something else here at night. Oh yeah, live music. Annual Buford Water Festival. Looks like a fun time. Everybody's getting the chair set up already. Front row seats if you're here early. I'm hoping this is tonight and maybe I can hear it from the boat. After checking out the town a little bit and stopping for a couple of cold brews, it was time to get back to the boat and get ready for the evening and the next day's adventures. Later that night, a bad storm rolled in, but it was pretty far off in the distance and it didn't affect us too much. And I had a nice calm night's sleep as we got ready to head our way out into the ocean the following day. So stick around. Thanks for watching.